Hello, Hallmarkies. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. This is a very, very special episode coming to you by me, Cami, the Hooked Hardy, and my wonderful co host, Jess. Hello, everybody. We are recapping. Oh, boy, I'm getting chills already. <laughs> <laughs> we are recapping a movie that is very near and dear to both Jess and my hearts because we grew up watching this. I was almost literally raised on this movie. <laughs> and and uh, while it's not a Hallmark movie, it should be. <laughs> and, uh, you know, in the in the spirit of it, we probably should use a different greeting, Jess. What do you say? We we probably should say good eye, mites. Yeah, <laughs> did the little the hat tip. I did the hat tip. I, I did. don't have a hat, but yes, it's, neither it's, do I. <laughs> the signature move there. We are recapping "Man from Snowy River." <laughs> now. Until Crocodile Dundee, this was the most popular Australian movie ever filmed. And it was very, very popular in the United States as well. That's why <laughs> we know it. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, uh, it was filmed, well, it came out in 1982. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was not even born yet. <laughs> 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 that was the year before I was born. And, uh, and I grew up watching it recorded off of TV on VHS. Mm. And, uh, and it's funny because, you know, the very, very beginning scene when Jim and his dad are talking about how, how they can make a living and how yes. they can keep the place running. I mm -hmm. didn't know that scene existed until I was a teenager because oh, it, wow. they hadn't, because whoever pushed record didn't oh. record that first scene. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's kind of a big scene too. It's kind of a big scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That whole entire first scene. And uh, by the, by the time whoever pushed record had pushed record, it was halfway through the, the intro sequence. So, you okay. know, <laughs> so yeah, I missed that whole exposition, <laughs> <laughs> but I have been watching this movie since I can remember. I, I never remember watching it for the first time. Mm -hmm. I, I grew up knowing what the plot was the entire time. <laughs> and yeah, just, oh man. Oh, I, I just, I get chills just <laughs> thinking about it. And Jess knows this, but for all of you Hallmarkies out there, I just recently kind of rediscovered my love for it because during quarantine, I wanted to watch something and I didn't just want to go to my usuals. I wanted to do something different. And I found my DVD of, uh, of Man from Snowy River. And I started to watch it and I started crying. <laughs> I, I started crying because it was so nostalgic mm -hmm. and it, and it prompted me to pull out my old sheet music and it prompted me to buy the sheet music for the second for the second film return to snowy river so it was great <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was yeah great. and then you, you use the perfect word nostalgic because yeah oh. i grew up watching mostly the second movie uh with right. my dad that's the one he really liked so we watched it more often um, uh -huh. but like the music and and the themes like obviously are in the first movie and so uh -huh. like i just hear those those notes of the the theme music and i'm like yep oh. snowy river <laughs> I know. And there's the, you know, there are the songs that get your blood pumping. Like when they're chasing mm -hmm. after the cults, you just, you know, yes. like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> like the musical score in this movie is it's just phenomenal. It, it really is. Brilliant. Is. It is brilliant. So all of you Hallmarkies out there, go to YouTube after this, look up Man from Snowy River soundtrack mm -hmm. and challenge you to just listen to it. By the end, you're going to say, where's this movie? I need it. You know? yeah. <laughs> And then you're going to watch it and you're going to fall in love with it. And then you'll be listening to that soundtrack constantly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So first of all, what is your favorite part of this one, Jess? What's your favorite part of this movie? Oh, um, okay. I have like 
<laughs> it's hard to choose, but okay. I, I really, I, well, I'm an equestrian, so I really love the big scene at the end where they're chasing after uh, the Brumby herd. And especially when Jim, we're way at the end, so I'm skipping ahead, but when Jim is going down that mountain um, on his horse and just like being an equestrian, knowing how difficult it is, not only for the rider, but also for the horse, like, that's legit. I would be scared to do it. I've been riding for a while, but I'd still be pretty scared to do that. Like, uh-huh. it's pretty dreadful. And don't worry, Hallmarkies, we're getting there. We, we, will, <laughs> we will talk all about that scene, promise. And not only the horse and the rider, but the cameras are going <laughs> down that true. hill. That is not a camera trick. And the other, the other great thing about it is Tom Burlinson, who plays Jim, he was not a writer. He pulls off this role so incredibly well. And this was his first film role, at least first big film role. And he, and he learned how to ride two months before they started shooting the movie. And mm. he did his own stunt. He, that was him going down that mountain. And so it's just, whoa. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, especially it knowing is, that he didn't have the background. No, no. You totally believe that he's been on a horse since he was three years old. Okay, so let's get to the actual recap, shall we? And let's do it. we're not going to recap the entire movie. So you're going to have to watch it for yourselves, but we'll give you the basic idea. So if you love Western movies, if you love any kind of historical movies, if you love romance, and if you love Australia, if you love two out of three, uh, two out of four, if you love one <laughs> out of four, you're going to love this movie. So now, uh, full disclosure, there are is some swearing. Mm-hmm. So you might want to just screen it first before you watch it with young children. And a I fight re- scene. And there are a couple of fight scenes, but the the violence is akin to when calls the heart. If you're a hearty, uh, it's a couple of fist fights. That's mm-hmm. that's the that's the amount of violence. It's very, very minimal on uh, very minimal on violence and just a couple of swear words. And so Story begins in the mountains of Australia. And uh, forgive me, all of you Australian fans out there, I am not good with Australian geography. Very sorry. Very sorry. So we begin the movie with Jim and his father in their cabin in the mountains. And they are trying to figure out how to make their money. They're trying to figure out how to keep their place going, how to May, how to do what they can to keep everything alive because they're, they're running out of money. And so they make a plan to go down on the flats is what they call it, down mm-hmm. to the low country to uh, hire out as a team. And, I, and this makes me laugh, especially because I didn't grow up watching this scene. But when, uh, when his dad says, won't be too bad, we can hire out as a team. And Jim goes, not as cooks, yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> they're because e- they're eating dinner. Yes, <laughs> you also see that um, you also see that Jim is playing, and so he's yeah he's playing the harmonia, and that's going to come into play later. And so then they hear their horse Bess uh, throwing a fit in the barn, mm-hmm. and so Jim goes out to see what's going on, and it's. The uh, it's the Brumby mob. It's the, the wild herd. Yes, the wild herd, um, referred to as the old thoroughbreds mob. Yes, and uh, and they they run all over the place and they stir up trouble, mm-hmm. and they and they get any horse that they go around very restless. And Jim has this fabulous idea to catch and break or tame or gentle uh, these, uh, these horses mm-hmm. in the thoroughbreds mob because they are worth quite a bit of money if they were caught and broken. Right. And so, you, so they start chopping down trees and building, and building a holding yard to keep these horses in 
but there is an accident. The mm-hmm. the Brumby mob comes through again, yep. and uh, the horse Bess she does end up running off, mm-hmm. and the father dies, which mm-hmm. is very very sad. He yeah. I didn't remember that part. I didn't remember that until I saw this time. Like, he, oh, he died at the very beginning. I know. I was like, oh, this is tragic. And Jim's mother died when he was much younger. So mm-hmm. he is now completely on his own. And he's of age, yes. But it's still very difficult that it was just him and his father. And now, uh, and now it, it's just him. And so... You see, you see him standing at the grave after the burial and some of the mountain men, some of the tough mountain men, they come and tell him that he needs to earn his yeah. right. <laughs> yes. He needs to earn the right to live up here. Just like your father did. Even though he <laughs> technically owns it now. Like, it yeah. Make any he, sense. No, it doesn't. He owns the place, but they're telling him to go down to the low country and earn the right to live up here. And we get the impression that they blame him for fa- for his father's death, mm-hmm. which is terrible. And uh, and we also meet Spur. Now Spur is a quirky fellow. Yes. <laughs> he he dresses very rough. He's got a weird black. I don't even know what you call it. I mean, it, it's a hat, but I don't yeah. know what. So he's got a weird hat. He wears old ripped clothing and he, uh, and he has a wooden leg, but that's all we know. And, oh, and he's like a treasure hunter. He's looking for gold. We don't know that yet. Oh, we don't know that yet. Okay. Nope. <laughs> Well, there you go. He's he's a he's a treasure hunter. Um so then we go back to Spurs house where they're eating a meal together. Something something that uh he is famous for Spurs wallaby stew spoken of in hushed and reverent tones. <laughs> and uh and he, Jim, tells him that Bess ran off because it was either a horse that Spur had given to Dad and him, or they shared the animal or something like that. The, the horse meant a lot to, to Bess, I mean, to Spur. He's saying, I'm going to go and get her back. And like, oh, sure you will. You're just going right. to walk down there and pluck her out of miles of wilderness. And like... I will spur. I'll run down there and fetch her back. Sure, and on foot too. And because he has no horse. And mm-hmm. then, oh, I love this part. Spur takes him out to a holding yard of his own. And I'm guessing that with the, uh, I'm guessing that with the, uh, the wooden leg that Jim and his <laughs> father probably built him that holding yard. Yeah. <laughs> And we see a horse and Spur says, I have no notion of his breeding, but he's a mountain horse, a good one. He's yours. I know. That was so sweet. It It is so sweet. And I can't pay for him. He's not for sale. Don't (laughs) argue. A man without a horse. Take the horse. A man without a horse is a man without legs. I mean, if someone's (laughs) offering me a free horse, I'm not going to say no. (laughs) I, I know, but I mean, Jim's very proud. Yes, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't proud. want to take advantage of of Spur and their lifelong friendship. So then we go to town. We go to town, and we hear about a colt worth a thousand pounds, mm-hmm. which especially, which especially back then, in the eighteen eighties, was a lot of money. Yes. <laughs> that that's that's a lot of money and we hear that uh we hear that it's old regrets last fall so the horse old regret is this is the last colt that she ever fold that she ever gave mm-hmm. birth to and that's why that's one of the reasons why he costs so much and jim helps the 
Jim helps the cult settle down on the way out of the train car because mm-hmm. there's almost a catastrophe with, with the horse bucking. And then we catch the first sight of <laughs> Jessica. Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and Jim catches the first sight mm-hmm. of Jessica. Yeah, he's a little, <laughs> he's a little entranced by her, but she is like, I don't need no man. She is like the female yeah. version of emasculated at that point. She's like, I didn't ask for your help. No. <laughs> so you can't exactly call it a meet cute. <laughs> not, not quite. No, not, no, it's not a Hallmark no, meet cute. No, 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 definitely not in that way. <laughs> So then she walks off with her father and the lawyer, of course, comes over to smooth it over, (laughs) Mr. Patterson. And he said, well, if there's anything I can do to return the favor, let me know. I'm like, well, as a matter of fact, I'm looking for work. (laughs) And, uh, and so Mr. Patterson, he just met the kid and he's giving him a letter of recommendation, which Mm -hmm. I thought was so kind. Yeah. 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 It is so amazingly kind. And then we go to the mine and we find out that Spur is digging for gold in this Mm -hmm. makeshift mine that he has built. It has been fairly unsuccessful thus far. Yes, indeed. And we meet Clancy. Clancy. (laughs) All we know about Clancy is that he's a great horseman. He's a tracker. And he's known Spur for years. And we also find out that he knew Henry Craig, Jim's dad, because when Spur says Henry Craig is dead, uh, Clancy says, oh, I'm very sorry to hear that. So we find out that they did know each other. And (laughs) this is my favorite line in this scene, because Clancy won't stop talking and he won't ma- stop making fun of Spur. <laughs> and, and Spur says, you know, the only way to shut that mouth is with some food. Come on. <laughs> I use that on my kids. So <laughs> That does work. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we go to, then we go to Spur's house where Clancy and Spur are eating and Spur shows him this little jar of gold that, he, yes. and he and he says, "Now that's the kind of color I've been getting lately." So he's very proud of this fine, <laughs> however small it is. And uh, and we also find out that Jim is going to inherit his father's share of the mine. So Spur mm-hmm. and Henry were partners. So back down on the flats, Jim has been hired and uh, be, because Mr. Patterson is a friend of Mr. Harrison. Mm-hmm. And so he reads the letter of recommendation and he says, I'll give you a try. And then you see, you see Jim splitting wood and you hear a couple of people whispering. And I can't understand why the boss took him on. He comes from the mountains. Yes, and like, oh, which no, is considered was... like a bad thing. It's like the the outcast or the, yeah, the mountain the, people. Yeah, the mount the mountains are the wrong side of the tracks for the for the lowlanders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, and then we meet who? Just Curly. 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 Oh, this man. I can't uh, stand He's an instigator. Curly. He's an instigator. He it, that's a good word for him. He is a horrible instigator. And he even tries, he, he even lights a cigarette in a barn and drops the match. And then <laughs> there's a little flame. Like you're about to set the a barn on fire. I know there's a flame in the hay. And Jim in true fashion. Throws manure. <laughs> Throws manure on the flame, which and consequently gets on Curly's boot. <laughs> I, I love that part. <laughs> I love that part. And then we see Jessica again, and she's about to go and saddle her horse, and she can't make a lead rope. She, she's trying to tie a knot to make a lead rope mm-hmm. and Jim shows her a slip knot, 
which yes. uh, it's called it's called the the Tom Fool's Knot. That's what it is. Uh, and this is kind of the first interaction because the first time they meet, it was just Jess yelling at Jim. Right. <laughs> but now we get the first interaction. Yeah, some words kind of, between both of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, and we hear uh, we hear Harrison come up. And Jess immediately stops saddling her horse, Kip, because Harrison is upset that Jess is not at her lessons. And <laughs> this is something I didn't understand until I was older, but he says, you should be thinking of marriage, children. The well-known cattle breeder has a breeding plan for his daughter as well. <laughs> you know, just, whoa! Yes. She's, she's spicy. She, she's she spicy. is feisty. But she, she is wants feisty. to be an equal in a man's world. And she's in a, you know, the culture that that's not acceptable. So she's got to right. fight for it. And we find, we find out when they're at dinner. Let me backtrack just a little bit. So... There's a whole lot of talk of Clancy coming to the station, which is the Australian term for ranch, for any of you not familiar with that. So uh, there's a whole bunch of talk of Clancy coming to the station. And this is when we find out that Clancy is a legend, mm -hmm. that, that everybody knows who he is and he's very famous. And so when Jim tries to tell the other station hands that he knew him. him, that he knew Clancy, they laugh him out of the bunkhouse. Yep. Uh, but what, what happens when Clancy arrives? He goes straight up to Jim and shakes <laughs> his hand and asks about, or says, sorry about your father and puts them in their place. It was, and I love, I love that Jim is just stoic. He's just yeah, got he a doesn't, stoic. Like, he doesn't glow. No, it. but he but he looks at the other he looks at the other hands and one of them the nice one not curly mind you but <laughs> the but the nice one I call him the nice one he kind of salutes as if to say hey sorry you know? <laughs> he he stands up for Jim yes. almost throughout the entire movie he's on his side so then we go to dinner it's dinner inside the Harrison estate. I'm not yes. even going to say station because it's a very nice house. Very fancy. You can tell that he's very wealthy. We meet Aunt Rosemary, the mm -hmm. feminist. Yes. <laughs> she is right there with Jessica. <laughs> she, well, she taught Jessica. Yes. <laughs> because we come to find out that Jessica's mother has passed on. And it was evidently a very long time ago. And so Rosemary has been living there trying to help raise Jessica and also trying to convince Harrison of Jessica's good mind, a way with horses and an eye for stock breeding. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love her now. Will you have these gifts developed or will you condemn her to domestic dullness? <laughs> A lot now, of sass. A lot of sass. A lot of sass. The problem here is Jim comes in with firewood mm -hmm. and just sets it down, minds his own business, but Clancy calls him over and says, Mr. Harrison was talking about taming the Snowy River Country. <laughs> yes. <Ugh>. Uh, <laughs> you, you know it better than... Well, and I mean, Clancy's, Clancy's being very respectful, very mm -hmm. good to ask his opinion. You know it better than any of us. What do you think? And, um, and then Clancy gives him a, a, a compliment. The boy's got a quality about him. And, um, and he says, yeah. And Harrison says, yeah, the mongrel quality of the mountain men. Mm -hmm. And Clancy says, does that include your brother? Mm -hmm. We learned about his brother. And Harrison says, I have no brother. Like, Disowned him. Oh. <laughs> so... We don't know what's going on there, but we know that there's an issue. Mm -hmm. And the issue continues because in the bunkhouse, they're preparing for a muster. They're preparing to take the, take the cattle up to go graze in the mountains for a little bit because the grazing is better. And Jim is not going. 
Mm-hmm. They, he's really upset about it too. Like, he is upset. So wants to go. It's like what he does. He's a mountain man. Yes, he is. A, I don't blame him. He's he's the he's being singled out to not go, mm-hmm. and and when he asks the uh, um, I, I mean the foreman. There we go. When he when he asks the foreman, Kane, uh, he says, "Why? Why me?" All Kane does is look at the house, and Jim goes. I think I know. Yep. You know? <laughs> so the men leave and Jim, they're trying to make a butler out of him is what he says. <laughs> Brings in tea when, uh, when Jessica is butchering Furley on the yes. piano. <laughs> She's like attacking the piano. <laughs> <laughs> And Aunt Rosemary says, really, Jessica, you're, uh, what is it? You're playing that piece with all the sensitivity of a road mender. <laughs> <laughs> so Jim comes up with the tea and, uh, and Rosemary says, can you join us? And like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't blame him. He's, yeah. he's, you know, he's a brand new stable hand. He's being turned into a butler Mm -hmm. and then they say join us rosemary rosemary is like the rosemary of when calls the heart she tells it like it is (laughs) i love this male company will be a pleasant relief in this hot house of female emotions (laughs) (laughs) so jessica starts pouring the tea but she notices that he's down and she says, we're both feeling sorry for ourselves today. Mm-hmm. Neither of us where we want to be. And he says, I think they're trying to make a butler out of me. And, well, they're trying to make, make a, lady a lady out of out me. Of me. <laughs> and then he says, like, they're not going to be successful at that or something. They, they won't have no luck. And, and, and she's she, so offended. <laughs> she thinks that he's talking about her. Yeah, well, he's talking about himself. He's talking about himself. But she just, oh, she's so quick to get. Which is kind of interesting because she doesn't want to be a lady. Like, she doesn't want that training anyway. So I I know. It's almost like a compliment to her, but she totally does not take it in that manner. Well, and I noticed throughout this entire movie, the first half, she's she's a little spoiled one, isn't she? But then we start talking about moms. Mm -hmm. Jim is eyeing the piano and she says, did you play? And he says, yes, just a bit. Before my mom died, she was starting to teach me. And all of a sudden, Jessica gets very solemn. And, Do you miss her? And he says, yes, obviously. And so, I never knew my mother. And then what does he say? I bet she was pretty like you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so first compliment is out. <laughs> yes. She can't and get mad at that one. <laughs> no, she cannot get mad at that one. And so... Then, uh, and then he leaves. He makes a gracious exit and says, thanks for the tea. I've got some jobs to do before dinner time. Bye. <laughs> and then she sits down and she plays for Elise perfectly. You know, it's, yes. it's almost like she realizes just how much she has after that conversation with Jim. Jim is so good for her. He really, you know? is. <laughs> he really is. He really is. So, and then we see Rosemary come in and mm, she notices there's a difference. <laughs> so, so then we cut to the stable and Jim is feeding the new colt and He finds out from Jessica that Curly does the breaking of the Mm -hmm. horses. And that does not sit right with Jim. (laughs) Because that can't be a good thing. (laughs) (laughs) No, you work with a horse, not against him. And Jessica goes, really? Well, that's what my father taught me. (laughs) And so Jessica challenges Jim to break the colt. Mm -hmm. And he's what about your father? Uh, he'll be away gone for a week. <laughs> yeah, he'll be away for more than a week. If the job's done by the time he gets back, what can he say? I mean, <laughs> she's at this point, she's bad for him. 
<laughs> she, she's just, oh, she just yep. kicks and prods and pokes. And so he starts breaking the cult. And this is where we have one of the most beautiful pieces. It's the first one I learned to play on the piano. It's called Jessica's Theme, Breaking in the Cult. And it's this whole beautiful musical montage mm -hmm. of the two of them breaking the cult. And, but then there's a problem. What happens? The Brumbies come back. The Brumbies are now down on the lowlands and they pass right by and Jim sees Bessie. Bess, and he reacts. He jumps on this colt worth a thousand pounds. I know, they just leap the fence. So I was like, oh, that's, that's, okay, as an equestrian, like, that's so risky. Like, the fact that you're riding another person's horse that doesn't belong to you, that's also an incredibly expensive horse. Like, so many things could go wrong. Yes, <laughs> and then you jump a fence. And they jump the first fence, and then I think he gets dumped at the second fence, right? Yeah, be, um, because he stops. They make it over the first fence, and you got that eerie, bow, you know, the, mu <laughs> the music is just yes. so incredible right here. And so then, uh, but yeah, the colt stops short of the, of the second fence, mm -hmm. and Jim falls off, and he yeah. actually gets trampled. Yeah, it's like the herd's and still coming. He's like, the oh. herd comes, and he is trampled trampled but luckily he fares pretty well you see him <laughs> in the bunkhouse laying down recovering and <laughs> jessica comes in how's the head <laughs> yeah i know they have this really nice witty banter going and then it like so quickly turns hostile <laughs> i'm like guys come on but just i mean for for her to shout in his <laughs> face how's the head it was fine until you shouted at me <laughs> <laughs> and so the colt is not hurt thankfully but he but thankfully but he's a little flighty and jim is very scared of what's gonna happen when harrison finds out mm -hmm. and oh he won't we've all agreed not to tell him <laughs> we who's we mrs bailey aunt rosemary and i <laughs> I'm not hiding behind the skirts of a bunch of women. <laughs> <laughs> well, not a hide behind of, women. A lot of pride to not hide behind women. <laughs> but when Harrison comes back and obviously sees him that he's not out of bed, he's just getting dressed. And like, what happened? I came off off a horse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he even backs down. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, and Harrison says, you think you can get back on, pick up 20 strays we left mm -hmm. up top? Like, yes, sir. Yeah. It's a big deal for him to ask <laughs> yes, Jim to do yes. that. <laughs> that is huge. I don't know. I don't know if he, I don't know if Harrison thought that he was leaving the dirty work to Jim. Maybe. But, but either way. That's, that's his ideal. I, I don't think that I, I, I would not think, I would not think that Jim is, I wouldn't think that Harrison is trying to make it up to him because Harrison mm -hmm. is not that kind of person. No. And so I don't think that, I think that he's trying to pass off the dirty work. Um, that, but, you know, it's what Jim craves is to go back to the mountains. So uh, it's a, uh, but he so yeah he's happy to go back up and so jim goes back and he's and he of course talks to spur mm -hmm. first Visit spur we learn that spur is the mountain man that happens to be harrison's brother <laughs> you know and it's funny because jim says i'm working for a fellow called harrison he reminds me of someone you never told me you have a you had a brother how did you get that? You know? <laughs> and okay, I did not know until I was, I think, in my 20s, maybe an older teenager. But I did not know that Kirk Douglas, which mm -hmm. a lot of you will know, is a very, very famous actor from back in the day. His son is Michael Douglas. He's famous for Romancing the Stone, The American President, 
Uh, I think he, the, he was in a movie called The Game. But his father, Kirk Douglas, was very famous. Uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And a lot of Westerns, apparently. So he, so he's a very famous actor. And he did both roles. Mm-hmm. I didn't did notice that. For, I time. didn't. Oh, this um, time. Yeah, well, I mean, I haven't seen it since I was a kid. And I, I just had, I'm like, those eyes look really like with the eyes. The eyes gave it away. And it's like, those eyes look very distinct. I'm like, oh, it's the same person. I went on IMDb. And I'm like, ha. <laughs> I did not realize it until I was watching it one time when I was a late teenager or early twenties and it said Kirk Douglas Mm -hmm. in the, in the, in the cast list Mm -hmm. at the very ending, at the very end on the credits, it said Kirk Douglas in two places. And I rewound it like, wait a minute, what? (laughs) That's the first time I noticed. Yeah. So Everybody, wait until you see this incredible performance by Kirk Douglas because he is amazing, mm-hmm. and he does both. He does both roles so distinct, so distinctly, yeah. and oh, it yeah, it's he's a he's got a very distinct performance with both of them. You you can't recognize him you really cannot really can't (laughs) my favorite part of this scene is that jim is very discouraged that he will not be able to find the strays Mm -hmm. and (laughs) and spur gives him exact directions on how to find them and he says warm pocket good foliage gather them up with a butterfly net (laughs) it's that easy yeah how do you know well i don't always eat wallabies Wallabies too (laughs) (laughs) and he picks up the steak with the fork and goes huh harrison had said before these mountain men get their grubby hands on them talking about the strays and so then jim just starts laughing (laughs) that his that his dear friend has been stealing from his boss (laughs) who is who is his brother you know Just a little payback for being disowned <laughs> by his brother. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. And then we see some beautiful scenery, some beautiful scenery as Jim is as Jim is searching for the for the herd and he's and and he's gathering them up. We see beautiful mountain scenery and then the music is just the icing on the mm. cake. That There is, you go. It's that a good word. It. Oh my gosh, it enhances the majesty. So, we're back on we're back on the station mm-hmm. and there's a problem. Harrison notices the girth marks on the colt and then he takes a closer look and he finds rocks in the hooves and he goes and finds jessica actually all three women are in the (laughs) separate kitchen so he gets all three of them at once Mm -hmm. and he gets it out of jessica who rolled the colt who rode the colt and so she tells the truth and instantly jim is fired Mm-hmm. He gets off this place the moment he gets back. And then he tells Jessica that she's going to a women's college. Which she does not want. She and did not take that well. No, and then he didn't. slaps her. <sighs> it's so painful to watch that. It is. It is very, vi- and then I don't know Ooh. what's, I don't know what's worse. The slap or you're as you're deceitful, deceitful as your as mother. Your mother. She didn't even know her right. mother. And so for him to say that, for him to say that to her is just, she got a slap to the face and a punch to the gut. Mm-hmm. That, that was just wrong. Yeah. So and she takes off. <laughs> she takes off. Totally understand taking off, riding away, galloping out that anger and that energy, but mm-hmm. To go that far. Right. And she had to have seen the weather was changing and getting caught, like, because then she gets caught in the big storm. and Yeah. Ugh, Which changes bad a whole lot faster in the mountains mm-hmm. than down there on the flats. Yeah. 
you know, and so if the weather is quote unquote starting to change, then it's already gone in the mountains, Mm -hmm. you know? (laughs) Yeah. But we get a little bit of, we get a little bit of history here, but it's only hints. It's more like foreshadowing, but it's foreshadowing with history, you know? So it, it, it's really interesting how they do this, but Rosemary says, you wouldn't dare break the spirit of that wretched cult the way you just crushed your own daughter. Mm. And, and then, and then she said, you see other people so clearly, but look at yourself that night when you fired those shots, if your aim had been better, what then? And we go, huh? (laughs) We'll learn about that. We'll learn about that later. (laughs) And, but as Jessica said, Jessica is lost. <laughs> and Harrison tells Kane to get everybody ready to go out for a search party. Mm-hmm. And they're all <laughs> drunk. <laughs> so they gotta quickly sober up and be ready to ride in 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, they have to be ready to ride. <laughs> and, and the men are drunk. Curly is not even revivable. He is <laughs> assed out drunk. You show what a great, what a great stable hand he mm-hmm. is. <laughs> but I love what he says to the good one. I don't know his name because he calls him old man. He says, come on, old man, I need you. And he wakes up with a shotgun. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> and Kane just, Kane is so cool. He doesn't hold it up. He doesn't do anything. He just grabs it from him. You better watch what you say in your sleep. (laughs) Now, Jessica's gone and got herself lost. I need a tracker and you're it. (laughs) But we all all know they're not going to be the ones to find her. So, you know. Of course not. We got the best mountain man up there ready to go. I love, I love how it shows him tracking. Mm -hmm. I love how it does that. Because anything that he saw in the beginning could have been missed easily, but he's that good. He's that good. So very quickly, Jess has fallen asleep because it was nighttime when the big rain hit, she fell down a small cliff and Kip, her horse, ran off. Mm -hmm. And so she wakes up and she is on a very, very tiny lip of a very, very tall cliff. And there's no (laughs) scaling that cliff. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. So she screams and with good reason. (laughs) Well, I don't know much about tracking. I I assume he just saw the hoof prints and and realized it was a horse a horse, uh, a horse hoof print and that it was fresh. I'm assuming that's all he realized. He's like, okay, that's weird. And it's a um, single, it's a single hoof print mm-hmm. from, you know, from a single horse. So it wasn't the Brumbies riding by. Right. Yeah. There wasn't like a whole like, slew of them. So he follows that. And that's when he finds her horse and it's dead. And yeah. he notices her horse because he's seen yeah. her with it when he was helping her with the, the knot and um so yeah now he's uh, pretty worried because the horse well, is dead he knows, he knows the he knows the name right he, he comes down and goes kip yeah so he finds the horse and then i think he just starts looking for her nearby i mean there's no she doesn't have any prints that he's tracking and he kind of just gets lucky and uses his, his instincts really yeah but i love the look in his eyes he's Tom Burlinson has some of the purest blue eyes I have ever seen. And to see those eyes wide open with fear and concern and worry and just shouting, Jessica, Jessica, Mm -hmm. it just, just, where is she? Where is she? I can't find her. And then, okay, I don't know why this is so sweet to me, but the first time he calls her Jess, is when he's calling for her Mm -hmm. and he's just riding across the top of the mountain. Jessica, Jess. I just, he's calling her Jess. (laughs) (laughs) She hears him and she starts yelling, help, help me. And 
right. throws down he throws down his whip he doesn't even have a rope so he throws <laughs> down his horse whip and he wraps it oh my gosh this man must this man must be incredibly strong yeah. he wraps the whip around the end of the whip around his hand and waits for her to grab on and pulls her up I'm like mm-hmm. ouch that just hurts yeah. my arms looking at that I'm glad he didn't like break break a bone in his hand oh but he's Jim Craig. <laughs> <laughs> of course. So we cut to the we cut to the scene where um, Jessica is wrapped up in blankets and mm-hmm. she's putting her clothes out to to dry and she's very modest, all wrapped up in that blanket. Mm-hmm. And you know, Jim is being very careful to not to not invade her privacy. The, oh another amazing virtue about him you know <laughs> <laughs> yes um, and then she makes it clear that she does not want to go back nope i'm, I'm back. not going back and she tells him that he's been fired mm-hmm. and the only thing that makes him care about that is missing out on seeing her mm-hmm. and she says I'm not going back. And he's the one who says, I have to take you back because there are men out looking for you, risking their lives. Mm -hmm. And I have to finish this job. He's very conscientious. He is very conscientious. He's very loyal, even to a man who has fired him Mm -hmm. for a semi good reason. Yeah. I, I'm going to say a semi-good reason. Because it was, it was wrong of him to, you know, use the horse. It was. But. It was wrong of him to do all those things without authorization, but there should have been a warning or right. a pay doc, not firing. Mm-hmm. You know, because the colt was not hurt. The colt is still in perfect condition. But yeah, he says, no, I have to take you back. And that actually gets her very emotional. She, mm-hmm. I, Jim goes over, takes her by the shoulder and turns her around and says, I'm sorry. Gives her sweet hug. Mm-hmm. And oh, it's, mm, it's just adorable. It is. I, I know that <laughs> sounds corny, but it just is. Mm-hmm. He's just, he's just Very holding sweet. her. It's, he's just holding her, wanting to comfort her. And then She doesn't want to cry anymore, so she changes the subject. (laughs) She says, it's so peaceful here. It's like we're the only two people on earth. And you know what's going on in his head. He's saying, (laughs) that's the way I want it right now. (laughs) (laughs) And he just gently puts a hand to her face and he kisses her. Okay, this is, this is... Number one, the music backing it up is perfect. And then you have the beautiful Australian scenery (laughs) surrounding this kiss, which is incredible as well. And then you focus on the two of them. And it's the perfect kind of kiss because he leans in very gently, kisses her, comes back, gauges her reaction, and then he just goes for it. <laughs> Partially oh. laughing because you have all these details. And in my notes, I just put, they shared their first kiss. kiss. <laughs> but, but then, but then right the very next scene, you see Jessica coming out of the trees fully dressed. And it's obvious that she has been dressing in the trees and Jim has been waiting out mm-hmm. there. So, you know, nothing, nothing happened that was even the least bit all family friendly. <laughs> it's all family friendly and it's all very on the up and up. And then we have the next amazing scene. <laughs> Beautiful riding scene across those mountains. Oh all my right. gosh. Oh, right. That's right. <laughs> I know. I don't know what you're talking about. I assume there's this beautiful horseback ride across the, the Australian <laughs> scenery. The music. The music is what makes this moment so incredible. So he show, he's showing her the mountains. 
and she says it's beautiful and he says but wait till that gets here talking about mountains i mean talking about a rainstorm Mm -hmm. and she says it changes so quickly doesn't it one minute it's like paradise the next it's trying to kill kill you you. (laughs) yeah yeah that's the way it could be up here but if it was easy to get to know there'd be no challenge and this i never i never thought of it this way and well even after watching the movie so many times This didn't really occur to me, but you've got to treat the mountains like a high-spirited horse. Never take them for granted. And Jessica says, it's the same, it's the same with people too. Mm -hmm. And then, boom! (laughs) But this boom of music just (laughs) happens to coincide with this amazing kiss. So they go to Spurs' house, and they're looking for him. He's not there. So Jim leaves Jessica there at the house to go check by the creek, and Jess finds a picture of her mother that looks strikingly a, like her. A picture. Well, I, and I'm sure that there are pictures of her mother around the house, you know, so she knows that that's her mother. Mm -hmm. And it's in a music box frame. So Mm -hmm. this isn't just a dusty picture laying under the water picture. Right. It's not like a, it's not like it's a family photo. I mean, Spur, who's not her father, has this very, you know, this this picture of just her mother. Yeah, that's the word. Carefully preserved picture of her mother. And it's like, of just her mother. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Makes you start to wonder. Uh Uh-huh. And so then you hear Spur from outside and he sees Jim's horse it's apparent because he comes in the house yelling for Jim he's like they said old spur was mad huh mad yeah and Jim's like are you all right (laughs) got a little energy got a little energy got a little bit of energy and he goes I never felt better in my life hey and just immediately he catches sight of Jessica and boom his face goes blank Mm-hmm. And he says, Matilda. Yeah, he thinks it's her gold. mother. He he is transferred. He is transferred back into the past. And he says, Matilda, I found the gold. She says, I'm Jessica, Jessica Harrison. And then he's like, Jessica, you've grown up. <laughs> and this is when Jim makes introductions yeah oh by the way (laughs) this is your uncle your father's brother and she is in complete shock obviously Mm -hmm. she never knew she had an uncle and (laughs) do you remember the line that spur says one of life's injustices you never get to choose your own relatives (laughs) (laughs) and then he says let this be a lesson to you jim I find a little bit of gold and suddenly after all these years, the relatives turn up <laughs> <laughs> because that's what he was so happy about. Yeah. He, he found, found, a, a, found vein of gold. a vein, a vein, not just a couple of little chunks. He found a vein of gold in his mind. Mm-hmm. And so she tries to get answers about why he's got a portrait. He won't answer them. And, uh, and then that's when Jim says, can you take her down? And he, and he says, you'll look after her for me then. (laughs) (laughs) Then, Oh, I'll look after her like you were my own daughter. I know. Well, that, at that point, I'm like, that's when I first started to question, like, is he actually her father? I began to like have. You did? Yeah, because he said that oh. line. I thought that was like foreshadowing that he was going to be oh. her, her. That was going to be a big plot twist that he was her father, which, spoiler oh. alert, it's not. But. <laughs> spoiler alert, he's not. But. <laughs> but I was seriously wondering. He's like, he's got the picture of her mom, and he's like, like she's my own daughter. Like, I felt like there was like an inadvertent wink there. <laughs> like. Ah. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. But. All right. So. Jim leaves a note and his neck kerchief on a tree for the trackers to find. And, uh, and they do find it. 
Mm -hmm. They, they do find it. They find out that she is on her way home so they can turn around and go back and they won't be caught in the weather anymore because they're not having any luck anyway. <laughs> the, the tracks are all gone after all the rain. So yeah, good luck with that gentlemen. You know, <laughs> so this, this scene, it's the only scene between just Jess and Spur. And I love it. I absolutely <laughs> love it. She explains to him that she was really angry, and but it, it was silly of her to go. And he's saying, hey, you got to be impulsive. And <laughs> yeah, he doesn't judge her for it. No, like no. And then, <laughs> and then he said, and she says, now, tablecloth. And he hands her the newspaper. No expense spared, and you can read the news while you're eating. You know? <laughs> it's just funny. It's, and, oh, and she gets down the glasses. And, oh, these must be quite valuable. Match pair. They're both broken. <laughs> He's and so then funny. he is. I love Spur. And he's got that <laughs> he's got that he's got that hysterical laugh, which is just so much fun to listen to. And <laughs> so we go into the cool room <laughs> where there's this <laughs> big chunk of meat. And and Jess says, Ah, you raised beef. Oh, well no more known for it. Small modest herd made up of poor creatures who have lost their way. <laughs> so he's stealing all the stray. Yep, he's stealing the stray cattle, the ones that Jim is going back to get, the ones just like that. <laughs> and, and she goes, because it's branded with an H, and she says, yep. and uh, H is for a homeless. homeless. <laughs> that was hysterical. So funny. So they make it back down. And this is when Jess wants some answers mm -hmm. and Rosemary relents and she tells the story and she says, 20 years ago, two men were in love with the prettiest girl in the district. She was young and life for Matilda was like childish, childish games. They both wanted her hand in marriage, but she couldn't choose. So she decided that the first one to win a fortune to uh, to make his fortune would be her husband, which is a very bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Spur went looking for gold. Spur went looking for gold. Papa Harrison, he placed a bet on a horse, right? He placed a bet. He gambled all of his savings into one bold throw and it won. And he was wealthy. So now we now we go into the kitchen where Rose where uh, Mrs. Bailey has cooked something for Spur and he's eating it and he's trying to flirt with her. <laughs> but Jim comes in. Yes. <laughs> and Rosemary then joins them and says, You're still here. Well, you better not be when your brother gets back. We're on our way, but Jim says, I want to see Jessica. After I see Jess, which then both of them go, mm, okay. So Jess, uh, Jess is lying in bed, resting and recovering. There's a knock at the door, open when she says yes. And it's Jim. All she has time for is a smile before Harrison in. <laughs> bursts in the doors to the outside. He bursts in and is just hugging her, saying, forgive me, and just kissing her. And then he sees Jim at the door and he kind of, <clears throat> yep. I'm, I'm the boss yeah. of well, yeah. <laughs> you would think after this, he would have like kind of learned his lesson with Jessica because then he just turns around and tells Jim, you're basically not good enough for her. Like... What was this whole running away thing for? Like, Jessica wants to make her own decisions. Jim and Harrison get into a very big argument, and this is where some swearing comes out, <laughs> and, uh, and saying, you can't have her, basically. And Jim says, you're not the only one who can make something out of life, which is so true. I mean, he even says, I carved this place out of the bush. So why can't Jim do the same thing? 
Mm-hmm. You know, it just, it's, it's not fair. He's not using common sense. He's right. not using logic. And so Jim starts yelling, but someone cuts him off and it's Spur uh. walking into the room, which is a bad idea. <laughs> and Harrison goes, how dare you enter this house? And and my long lost brother didn't recognize you without a gun. And <laughs> Jessica heard that. <laughs> and then the truth comes out. Rosemary again tells the story. She's she's the catalyst, isn't she? She she is the catalyst for the truth. Nothing nothing is held back when Rosemary comes. So we find out that old regrets first fall. So the mother, the mother of the cult that is Harrison's thousand pound colt. Her first foal was a wedding present that Spur gave to Matilda and to Harrison. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that made Harrison incredibly jealous. And so Matilda was afraid for the horse. And so she turned it loose. Spur saw it running free, came to tell her, and dad found them together. Yep. And very out comes innocent, the gun. <laughs> very innocent. They weren't, they weren't doing anything wrong. He just came to tell her. Very innocent. But Spur got shot in the leg. And that's how he lost his leg. Mm-hmm. And then. And the important information is that the cult that ran away or that was set loose became mm-hmm. the leader of the Brumbies. Yep. Everything's so, full circle now. That's how Jim is part of the story. Spur brings him in. So you're more part of the story than you realize. And um, so they all decide to leave. And Jim tells Jessica, I'm leaving too. And she says, I'm coming with you. And he says, no. It couldn't work. It couldn't work, Jess. Which, Oh, it just breaks my heart. <laughs> We cut to the two brothers talking at the gate, and you're going to have to watch the movie for yourself to go find out what's, what that's about. <laughs> Let's just say that parentage is involved. Yes. <laughs> and uh, because Curly and his friend Moss come in drunk, and they start making insinuations mm-hmm. about Jim and Jessica up on the mountain. A fist fight comes out. Yes. And, and Jim wins. Of course. <laughs> of of course. course. Because these two men are drunk. And they're also lousy fighters. So, <laughs> But because of that, Curly and Moss sneak over to the stables mm-hmm. and let the colt go. Because they know Jim will get the blame. They know that Jim is going to get the blame. And this scene, even though it's the most violent of of the movie, it's very, very meaningful to me because, you know, I was born with a weaker left side than my right. Mm -hmm. And the final blows that Jim deals are left, left, right. And my big brothers would use that to help me exercise my hand. So then we find out Spur and Jim are are by a fire looking at the mountains. and, uh, And Spur tells him that he inherits the gold mine. Mm -hmm. And Jim says, you reckon there's enough in it for two? (laughs) And, And he says... You better have a drink. Maybe the only thing you get out of the partnership. <laughs> <laughs> and then Clancy comes up and Bring he says, news. "Yeah." And he says, "Somebody let Harrison's colt go." Mm-hmm. And what? What? And uh, and he tells Jim, "I want you with us to search." And he convinces him. Yeah. And it's a real character move that he goes and helps. I mean, he didn't have to. It is. He's provoked slightly by Clancy and Spur because he's, because he's given a chance. He's given a chance to prove himself, Mm -hmm. but 
on the other hand, it's an amazing character move. So then they go looking for the cult. Whole <gasps> huge. It's like the big, mob. big scene. Oh. Big scene. And the, the music. Best music. <laughs> the music. Oh it's my gosh. Gonna, it's going to get you riding a horse in your chair. I kid you not. You're, gonna, you're just going to be pumping your it's arms. Like 50 with that music. horses with great music, and they're jumping oh. and they're galloping. Some of the and people have very bad posture while riding, but we'll forget about yes, that. <laughs> yes, but Jim does not. <laughs> and it's so funny when people start falling off of their horses, Jim's crouched down low and he just looks back at people it's like falling. a jockey almost. Like, eh, okay. <laughs> so Jim is really proving his stuff out here. Mm-hmm. Jim is really proving his stuff. Even when Curly tries to mess him up by grabbing onto... Just so Den- dumb. De- I know, it's so dumb. He grabs onto Denny's bridle. It doesn't do anything. He tries to unbridle the horse. He only gets it about halfway down Denny's nose. Big deal. Yeah. You know? like- <laughs> so, uh, uh, but yeah, Jim prevails. Jim prevails. And he's Jim smarter prevails. than the rest of them because he knows the land. And he, he knows does. the herd better than they do. Yes, Absolutely. So Clancy tries to tame the horses by whipping. He not whipping the horses, just making whip sounds. He's trying to tame them, to get them to listen, to go where he wants them to. And the old thoroughbred is not having it. He and Clancy loses control of the mob and they all go down a very steep cliff. And then what happens? All of the riders come up to the cliff and they stop. Except Except for one. one. (laughs) (laughs) And it's so cool because there's that French horn from when he it, when he's going over Mm -hmm. that shot when he's going over. Oh, it's just powerful and majestic. It It is amazing. And then, you know when you know that that is a real shot it is not a camera trick go and check it out it's incredible it's insane it's insane it is it is <laughs> and then jim gets control of the herd and not only gets control of the herd he brings them all the way back to harrison's place he brings them all the way back to harrison and uh and so yeah, that that's a big deal. And it's so cool when you see them from afar. You don't really see this when you're up close. But when you see them from afar, you hear the whip and they immediately all turn at the mm-hmm. same time. I just went, whoa, that's a cool shot. <laughs> <laughs> and so Jim comes back with the entire herd, gets them in the holding yard, and... Harrison comes up to him and says, I promised a hundred pounds to whoever caught him, caught the colt. It's yours. Mm -hmm. What does he do? Wasn't in it for the money. Basically is what he says. (laughs) He completely denies it. He says, that's not why I rode. (laughs) So he says, I'll be back for the mares. Yeah, he says there are a dozen good brood mares in that mob. I'll be back for them. And then he peeks over. And he'll and also be back for Jessica. And for whatever else is mine. <laughs> 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 and here's where we have the famous line. Harrison says, you got a long way to go yet, lad. And Spur turns around and says, he's not a lad, brother. He's a man. <laughs> And then Clancy gets the line because the man, man from, from Snowy, Snowy River. River. And we didn't we didn't tell you this, but at one point, Jim actually drives the herd of horses through Snowy mm-hmm. River. So mm-hmm. it's even cooler. Yeah. <laughs> so Jessica follows him out a little way as he rides away. And she waves and he does the hat tip. <laughs> when and you off think he of, goes. When you think about it, it's a really lousy goodbye. <laughs> but cinematically, okay. cinematically it works. 
<laughs> Cinematically, it's beautiful. But when you think about it, I'm like, you didn't kiss her goodbye? Come on. Well, her father was there. He might lose a leg like Spur. That's true. <laughs> or both. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Why yeah, didn't I say Harrison that? is in the picture now. <laughs> Well, she's gone out far enough, and he turned around and went back in the house, remember? Mm -hmm. So, I don't, well, he might be watching from the window. <laughs> Probably didn't have sniper rifles back then, but you never know. Yeah, you never know. He's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim goes back to his beloved mountains and his homestead because he's finally earned the right and proved himself a man to go and be a man of the mountains. Mm -hmm. And that's the end. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an old film, but it has aged incredibly well. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest reasons is they don't try to use any trick photography. There's no, there are a couple of places where they do some weird still shots or slow-mo yeah. shots but the music is totally classic it would fit in perfectly in a western today and because it was done in a historical setting there's nothing modern to there's nothing modern to go oh that was made in the 80s mm -hmm. you know it has aged incredibly well it's a beautiful story it is majestic with its scenery and the storytelling and the way the music and the scenery go together with the story. So highly, highly recommend this movie. <laughs> All right, Jess, where can people find you? You can find me at Jess BSW blog on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Cami Drama Girl on Facebook, the Hooked Hardy Facebook page. And you can follow me also on my blog at hookedhardy.com. And by the way, for all of you Hardys out there, this is totally permissible because Dan Lissing is Australian. <laughs> and this is, you know, if Dan were, if, if, Jack were a mountain man. This would totally be their story. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Dan has gotten, mis not mistaken, but in the right getup, he's been called the man from Snowy River. So... <laughs> So it totally fits. And you can follow the podcast at Hallmark Eats Pod and Hallmark Eats Podcast all over social media. If you're listening on iTunes, please give, give us your ratings and reviews. And if you can, and if you're watching us on YouTube, which is where the fun is at, because <laughs> you can see all of our weird facial expressions, <laughs> please give us a thumbs up and your comments and we will see you next time. Bye everybody. Bye.